everybody, Dr. Mike here. Now it's very important for us to talk about blood flow throughout the heart and then throughout the body. Now while I've got a picture here which looks quite complex, I'm going to simplify it first and then we'll refer back to the more complex image. So first thing you need to do is simply draw up a picture of the heart that you'd probably see in a cartoon for example. So that cartoonish heart. Now all you need to do is separate that into quadrants, so that's four different areas and what you'll find is if you've got two at the top, two down the bottom. Now remember the two up the top, they're hollow chambers and the two down the bottom are hollow chambers as well. The two up the top are called atria and the two down the bottom are called ventricles. That's the first point. The next point is that when we look at the heart, what you'll find is that blood will always enter atria. So that means blood will always enter the chambers at the top. Always. Now in actual fact, what we can do is we could color code this a little bit and we can have blue entering the right hand side and red entering the left hand side. So that means deoxygenated blood, blood that has less oxygen in it, and oxygenated blood. And again, both are entering the atria at the same time. Then what you'll find is going from atria to ventricle, atria to ventricle, they need to move through valves. Now on the right hand side, the valves that it moves through are actually three valves. So there's one, two, three valves on the right hand side called the tricuspid valve. Cusp is just referring to the leaflets, right? So there's three of them, three cusps, and on the left hand side there's two, so it's called the bicuspid valve, sometimes called the mitral valve because it represents that of the Pope's hat, which has the etymology of mitral. Okay, so what we've got is blood coming in. Let's start with the right hand side. Deoxygenated blood coming into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then from the right ventricle it pushes the blood out. Now, I need you to think about where it's going to push the blood to. If it's deoxygenated blood, there's no point delivering it to the body. If it's deoxygenated, it needs oxygen, so we need to send it to the lungs. And that's exactly where it goes to. From the right ventricle, it goes to the lungs. Alright, now once it gets to the lungs, the lungs give it oxygen. So now what we have on the other side of the lungs is oxygenated blood. Now I want you to think about this, if it's oxygenated blood, it now needs to be delivered to the body, but there's not enough pressure behind it because it's just come from the lungs. So it needs to go back to the heart. And I told you that if it enters the heart, it always enters atria. So we've now got oxygenated blood from the lungs going back to the atria, this time the left atrium. It goes from the left atrium through the bicuspid valve with two leaflets and into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it pumps the blood out. And where's it going to pump that blood to? Well now it's oxygenated, it can deliver it to the tissues so it can send it to the body. Now once it's delivered it to the body, what happens is it's deoxygenated because it's delivered that oxygen. So it needs to go back to the heart and where's it going to go back to? The right atrium. So what we have is this circuit and you can actually see there's a circuit for the lungs and a circuit for the body and you can also see that the right hand side of the heart deals with deoxygenated blood, the left hand side of the heart deals with oxygenated blood which means the right hand side of the heart throws it to the lungs, left hand side throws it to the body. All right? Blood always enters atrium, always leaves ventricles. Now another thing you need to remember is this, if it leaves the heart or leaves the ventricles, it's via an artery. If it comes back to the heart, it's by veins, which means you've got two veins here coming back in, or two groups of veins, and you've got two groups of arteries leaving the heart. So now what we can do is we can translate it in the more complex image right here. So we can start at the same point. We can start, if you want, at the right, ventri uh, right atrium. And I told you that deoxygenated blood is entering that right atrium. Now what we've got here is a more complex version where you can see the deoxygen deoxygenated blood is entering the right atrium from the body, but we know that there's body above the heart and body below the heart. So there's two entry points via the superior vena cava, which is a vein, and the inferior vena cava, which is a vein, and it's deoxygenated blood going to the right atrium. Then that right atrium contracts and pushes blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Then that right ventricle contracts and because it's deoxygenated, it's sending it to the lungs. And as you can see, it comes up through the pulmonary artery, 
or pulmonary trunk. Now in actual fact, there is another valve here. It's called a semilunar valve and it's called the pulmonary semilunar. Semilunar because it looks like semilunar when you look at the moon, lunar, and it's a crescent moon. That's a semilunar, that's what it's referring to. So it's got this crescent shape to it. So we've got these crescent shaped semilunar valves in the pulmonary artery. The right ventricle contracts, pushes it up the pulmonary artery and diverges, it splits, bifurcates is the word, and goes through the pulmonary arteries to the left and right lungs, gives it oxygen, comes back to the heart, this time the left hand side, oxygenated via the pulmonary veins, because it goes back via veins, and you can see there's four, two on either side, four pulmonary veins going back to the left atrium. Left atrium contracts, goes through the bicuspid or the mitral valve to the left ventricle, it contracts, pushes blood up through an artery that leaves the heart called the aorta, and there's another semilunar valve here called the aortic semilunar valve. And then the aorta has multiple branches, multiple branches that deliver it to the body, and then once it's deoxygenated, it comes back. So what are the take-home points? Well, we've got the right-hand side of the heart deals with deoxygenated blood, left-hand side of the heart deals with oxygenated blood. Blood always enters the heart into atria via veins and always exits the heart from ventricles via arteries. And that is blood flow.